Well, when we asked you what you wanted us to ask Elliot Randall, one of the big questions was, what kind of guitars did he use on his famous guitar solo for Reeling in the Ears? That's coming up. Remember, if you want to support the channel, there are links in the description. You can either buy a t-shirt, make a donation on PayPal, or join our Patreon. Here's Elliot Randall. Uh, Darren Lowry wanted me to ask you, uh, he's a fan of the channel, what guitar and amp did you use on Reeling? Ah, a question I get a lot. Of um, course. This guy. Oh, really? This is my 1963 Fender Stratocaster. Got a, a Gibson humbucking pickup in the in the uh, neck position, which I put on because of a wonderful Canadian guitarist called Dominic Troiano. I just interviewed his brother, Frank. That's great. <laughs> They're nice people. He's, he's he's nice. Dominic was a prince. He was an absolute prince. So, yeah, put this pickup on it, and um, never look back. I always. Love this extra fat, juicy stuff that the pickup brings to the character of the instrument. And um, so for reeling, I get to this, when I got to the studio, I realized that there was no amp there. In New York, all the studios have amplifiers. So with my box of pedals and stuff, I can make any amp sound almost like any other amp, but there was no amp. So, um, Somebody told us that there was an amp in the storeroom right next to Village Recorders, which belonged to a guy who's now my friend, um, but I didn't know at the time. Um, and it was this great, big, absolutely huge Ampeg VST amp. It had hundreds of watts in, in the amplifier itself and eight 10 inch speakers. It was loud. I mean, it was seriously, seriously loud. And somehow for the sound that I wanted, the best, the best sound was to crank it all the way up. And um, I did it. And Roger just opened the door to the studio and said, whoa, and got himself some, a set of ear protectors, not earphones, ear protectors. Went out, so I did this a little bit as I was playing. Found the spot in the room where he could place one um AKG 414 microphone put it there and the sound you get is the guitar a cable the amplifier on full blast no, no pedals no nothing but, but I mean you got to credit it wasn't just me it was Roger's engineering that brought the sound out even further and better what it, what was your experience like with Paul Aiken it was just a quick studio recording. I'm not sure that I even met Paul. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people that you wind up playing with as a studio musician where you're brought in to be part of the rhythm section or an overdub person. And the, the person whose record it is, isn't there, which is sad because you, you want to get to know who it is you're playing for. And, you know, yeah. it could be fun. Uh, fame with uh, Irene Cara. Uh, uh, yeah. Where, where, uh, how did that happen? Well, I knew Irene before fame because she was dating at her young age a drummer in a band that I was friendly with. And I got a call from, I think it was just a contractor, you know, one of the, one of the times where it's good to be first call, uh, um, to come and play for a movie track. I did. I came down. I met Michael Gore, who, by the way, is Leslie Gore's kid brother. And Michael had written the music to fame. And it was at Media Sound Studios, which is gorgeous old church turned recording studio. And um, they had me play the intro. Nothing. And then the solo. And for you... <clears throat> For you musicians out there who have to deal with tricky situations, I'm in the middle of doing my solo, which is the middle of the, the tune. Yeah. And uh, Michael presses the microphone and says, Ellie, come in here. And it um, turned out that Alan Parker, the, the director of the, of, the, of the film, was in the studio at the time. And he said, you know, I'm not sure how I'm going to cut the dance scene. So what I need from you 
are four different segments, each of which could be used by itself, by itself, but they also have to be contiguous so that if I decide to use all four, it doesn't sound like, and now here's the next part, and now here's the next part. So it was an amazing challenge. It was a real nail biter, so to speak. How do I make these hook up? And to this day, when I listen to it, I get a little, because mm, I can hear, you know, where I would like to have done it better. But it was, it was really quite a challenge. Well, maybe you hear that, but I don't hear that. So good, good. <laughs> That's good to hear. We'll have more from Elliot Randall in a couple of days. Remember, he was a session guitarist for Steely Dan, Frankie Valley. Paul Anka, two of the KISS members' solo albums, Gene Simmons, Peter Chris. He worked with the Village People, Richie Havens, Peter Frampton, Yoko Ono, Carly Simon, Carl Wilson, Laura Nero, Kirsty McCall, and many others. Remember, if you want to support the channel, all the links are in the description. You can make a donation at PayPal, join our Patreon, or buy a t-shirt. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music.